right? So let me make uh, let me make a title a hundred iterations. Okay, and let's compare with uh, uh, with the original solution. U exact uh, uh, I should be dividing by two fifty five also. Okay, so this is my original solution. Uh, title exact solution. So I have the exact compared to a hundred iterations. What do we see? Darker, right? Somehow the solution is after a hundred iterations is darker than the exact solution. So the it hasn't exactly converged yet. And let's look at what is the solution error. I am sure uh, u minus u. Well, we know u exact is larger than u, so let's visualize u exact minus u. Oops. Divided by 155. And the title solution error after 100 iterations. Oh, matrix dimension must agree. I So my u exact after expanded, I call it u expanded. Right. Okay. This is my solution error. That's interesting because it's like, a, of course, we know that if you super, if you subtract, if you add these 100 iterations with the solution error, I get the exact solution. That's just the definition of the solution error. But there is something interesting that the 100 iteration solution seems to be picking up the contours pretty well, like all the sharp features, right? While well, the solution error seems to contain a blurred image of the original solution. So let's keep iterating. Let's do uh, this equal. Let's look at what's the solution after a thousand iterations. Now I did a thousand iterations. Let's make another figure. I am sure you divide by. Two fifty-five. Uh, title: A thousand iterations. Now it's a lot better in that there it's not as dark as the hundred iterations, right? A thousand, a hundred, a thousand. It's now a lot brighter, but it's still not as bright as the true solution, exact solution. A thousand iterations. And if we start to look at, uh, where's MATLAB? If we look at the uh, the solution error, uh, so figure, I am sure, you expanded. I will change this to solution error after a thousand iterations. That's what I get. So now it's not even a blurred image, it's just a completely blurred so I basically get a, a very smooth white blurb of light okay right so now now I, what I can see is that because the solution error contains completely smooth uh, features what I can expect is that the solution after a thousand iterations should already contain all the anything that is not as smooth as uh, basically a smooth hill, right, on the solution. Now uh, let's do more. So we know it'll finally converge. So let's just uh, brute force it, make two other zeros. It may run for a while, right? But after it finishes, we know it should converge pretty much to the right solution. Now the question as it is running is, can we know a priori what we were observing? Can we know how the convergence is going to happen? What modes converges faster? What modes converges slower? So why after many iterations I still get a solution error that is like a very smooth blurb of light? Yes? 
Right, remember our eigenvalue, eigenvector analysis on the error equation? The error is going to decay to zero, right, which now we have finished. Uh, so let's solution exact, I am sure. Solution, okay, solution after now it's 100,000 iterations. Expanded. So now this is the solution error, which is completely dark now, which is a good sign. And uh, uh, figure, I am sure, you title. Duh, duh. So this is my solution after many, many iterations. And comparing this to the exact solution, we can't see any difference, right? So the solution converged. But it took a lot of iterations. So, right, so the Jacobi iteration converges for this problem, but not particularly well. So what does that mean if we look back into this error equation? We know that um, at, after every iteration, the exponent on this lambda, on these eigenvalues, are going to be increased by 1. So lambdas that are close to zero would be taken to zero very fast if you take power of k, right? So if, I mean, it doesn't have even to be close to zero, even if lambda has an entry that is 0.9. After a thousand iterations, it's going to be pretty much zero, right? So, so 0.9 to a thousand is like, ah, 10 to the minus 64. So basically, even after 100 iterations, if uh, I have an eigenvalue equal to 0.9, it'll be pretty much zero. So anything that is away from one with a sufficient distance is going to be zero. So even after 1,000 iterations, we still have some mode there, means that has to be very close to one, right? So 0.99, it's also going to be pretty much zero after a thousand iterations. 0.999 would still have something there. So we probably have an eigenvalue in the matrix that is as large as 0.999, right? We know it wouldn't exceed one because if, if it exceeds one, it'll diverge. So, but it must have an eigenvalue that is almost one. And can we guess what the corresponding eigenvector is? What is the corresponding column in V look like? Is the eigenvector corresponding to the very close to one eigenvalue representing a smooth feature or an oscillatory feature? After yes, the error was smooth after many iterations. That means the remaining part, right, after you take k to be large, the remaining part would correspond to the column of v corresponding to a large eigenvalue. By large, I mean close to 1, not 0.9, but 0.999. So, so that is a, a way we are going to analyze the behavior of these iterative methods uh, starting from next lecture. And then we are also going to be talking about what can we do to accelerate it. Okay, and that, that's going to be our multigrade method, yes? Um, I have a question about your code and why we don't need to use f in the formulation of u k plus 1. We use the previous guess, but in, in that here? right there. Yeah. yeah, why don't we need to use f? f is added here. <laughs> so, so I can so here I can either initialize u k p plus one to be zero and add the f into here. Here I just took the alternative approach of initializing this to the f term to uh, to to this. I initialize the next iteration to this term and then added this term in a loop. Right. So it's a it's this line that added the f term. 